Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. John's Hoxton for our online worship service. It's wonderful to see you today. My name is Reverend Graham Hunter. I'm the vicar of the church, and it's wonderful to be welcoming you to our building, as it were, through the wonders of the internet uh, for our online worship this morning. I want to welcome you if you are visiting for the very first time, if you've been scrolling through and you've come across this feed or a friend of yours has posted it, then it's wonderful to have you worshipping with us today. I want to welcome you if you're a regular member of our church family or someone from the local Hoxton neighbourhood or if you're watching from somewhere else in the world. Uh, do feel free to drop us a little comment uh, on church online or on Facebook live and let us know where you are watching from. It'd be really lovely to meet you this morning. Uh, our service today is in two parts. Uh, for the next half hour or so we're going to spend some time in sung worship from the comfort of our own homes or wherever you may be uh, and we're going to worship together online because we're not allowed to sing together in our building just yet. So we're going to sing songs of worship to God uh, wherever we are in this next half hour. And then at 10.30, we're going to gather in person here in the church building or online from wherever you are. And we'll hear Bible readings, a talk. We'll share stories from around our church family. Uh, we'll share the peace and we'll celebrate Holy Communion together. And at 10.30, SGH Kids, our groups for five to 11-year-olds, will also be meeting here at the church building downstairs in the crypt. And they'll be rejoining us um, for Holy Communion so that we can all do that as one large church family together. And I'm delighted to say as well that uh, SGH Youth is back in person today as part of their youth Welcome Week, and they'll be meeting again at 12 o'clock here in the church building. I do want to encourage you, uh, if you want to come in person uh, to the service, there's still a few tickets left. If you want to sign up for SGH Youth or SGH Kids, then just head on over to our website and follow the links to sign up. Throughout the service, it would be wonderful if you're watching online, if you would engage with us through the comment thread, you can post on one of our social channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we'd love to get to know who you are, so do head on over to our website, sgh.org.uk forward slash welcome, and there you'll find all the different ways of keeping in touch and a digital connect card that you can fill out so that we can help you get to know other people in the church and feel more like you belong in our church family. Do use comments and emojis, and you can request prayer. If there's something you have a particular prayer need today, you can request prayer through church online or by sending a message to our page. And I want to invite you as well. Uh, you can share this feed on your own um, news feed. You can, you can share this live stream. And there's never been an easier way to invite friends to church than just at the moment. All you have to do is click that share button, and people will be able to join in. If you've uh, missed previous week's services or talks and you want to catch up, you can head on over to YouTube or our Facebook page and you'll find everything there in the videos section. Anyway, enough waffle and preamble. I want to invite you to stand if you're able to and I'd like to pray for us this morning uh, as we begin a time of sung worship. I imagine some of you are still slumped on your sofa uh, I expect that's where my family are, uh, and, and maybe you don't really feel like standing up this morning. Um, and that's okay, I'm not going to boss you around, but why don't you stand up in your heart, as it were, even if you don't want to physically stand up, stand up in your heart, and put yourself again in the presence of Jesus. God has made himself available to us by his Holy Spirit. And in your living room, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, wherever you are just now, in this building he is here. So, Father, we welcome you today. We welcome your Holy Spirit into our hearts and into our homes. And even now, before we begin to sing, we turn our hearts back to you. We say that we love you, Lord Jesus, that we need you, Lord Jesus, and that we thank you for your death and resurrection by which you have made peace for us with God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you now.
invite you just where you are, just to wait on the presence of God for a few moments, to meditate again upon those words, I am forgiven, to wander once more at the amazing love and grace of God in Jesus. And for some of you now, um, you sense the presence of the Holy Spirit with you. When Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. I want to invite you now to breathe deeply. And as it were, to breathe in the presence of God, the living breath of God. It is his power at work in you that will heal you and transform you. I think uh, for one or two people watching this stream, life is an anxious time at the moment. Anxiety about work and about family. Anxiety still around COVID. All kinds of different anxieties. And Jesus comes and says, peace be with you. I want to pray for you now that you would experience the peace of God. 
Holy Spirit, we pray that you would simply minister your grace to everybody watching this stream right now. That they may find the peace and the joy they need. That they may know your love. We ask for more of you, Lord. And we pray, Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us for this time of sung worship online. Uh, if you want to join us in person at 10.30 a.m., there's only a few tickets left. Uh, and as soon as we finish this bit, I'm going to post the link in the comments thread in the stream. Uh, so do sign up on the link that I'm going to post. If you're coming over to the building, uh, you've got about... Um, 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. Uh, make yourself a tea or a coffee. Bring your own tea and coffee with you in a keep cup. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you very soon. Otherwise, if you are staying online this morning, we'll be back again at 10.30. So you have time now to go have a shower, some breakfast, a workout, whatever you want to do. And we'll be back here at 10.30 a.m. We'll see you very soon. Bye.
nothing for all that you've done for me. Peace from God. 
our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. John's Hoxton. My name's Sarah. I'm a licensed lay minister here, and I'm going to be leading this section of our service this morning. A really warm welcome to those of you who are with us in the building, and a warm welcome also to those of you who are watching online. It's so great to be together to worship God together this morning. Um, those of you who are online, really great to have you. Special welcome if you are joining us for the very first time um, or if you're just popping in, visiting, whether you're here in Hoxton or somewhere else in London or the country or even the world. Um, it's really great that you could join us today. Um, do let us know that you're here. You can pop some comments in the thread if you're on Facebook and as well if you're on Church Online. And um, as soon as she arrives, Jessica is going to be um, our online engagement person this morning. So she'll be chatting with you um, in the comments and just making sure everyone feels welcome. But for now, Graham will be doing it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, do look out and say hello in the comments. Uh, and just interact as much as you can from where you are at home. Messages, emojis, uh, the liturgy, uh, to feel fully part of the service today. <clears throat> and, um, and also, those of you who are watching online, it's a really easy way to invite your friends to church by sharing the live stream in your own Facebook feed. Um, people can hop in and have a look and see what it's all about. It's a great way to share Jesus with your friends and family. And obviously, you can catch up on previous week's services uh, in uh, Facebook and on YouTube as well if you want to go back, listen to last week's talk, or watch some worship as well. So this is part two of our morning service. We had our uh, song worship at 9.30 this morning. If you missed it, don't worry. You can go back and watch it later. It was particularly good, if I do say so myself. Only joking. <laughs> um, but yeah, so 9.30, I know it's early, but you can watch along at home. And you can sing because we are still not allowed to sing um, when we're here physically in the building. But you can sing as much as you want to at home. So it's a great way to worship God. So log on at 9.30 on a Sunday morning for that. And as part of our service this morning, we're going to have a Bible reading. We're going to have a talk. We're going to share some news and some stories from our church family. And those who are in the building with us will be sharing in Holy Communion. Um, SGH Kids is meeting downstairs in the crypt as we speak, and they'll be coming up and joining us for the Peace and Holy Communion a little bit later on. You do need to register to attend, uh, so if you've got primary age children and you want to get them part of that group, then you can head on over to our website, or you can email kids at stjohnshoxton.org.uk and get all the information that you need. Uh, we also have a group for preschool children, Diddy Disciples, and they um, meet uh, at 9.30 on a Sunday morning online. <clears throat> and if you'd like some more information about that, again, you can email kids at stjohnshoxton.org.uk. And we also have SJH Youth, who will be meeting after the service at 12 o'clock. And again, for information about that, you can email youth at stjohnshoxton.org.uk. I think that's everything for now. So after all of that, we're just going to take a moment of quiet to bring ourselves into the presence of God um, through repentance and confession. We all have ways in which we've turned away from God, forgetting him, disobeying him, ignoring him. And this time of confession is a chance to turn around and face him, confident that he's waiting for us like the father of the prodigal son waited for him to return home. So with confidence in God's mercy and grace, we pray together our prayer of confession, saying, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. 
Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, just before we carry on, we're just going to have a little spot of testimony. Um, And I'd like to invite John and David to hop up on the stage if they're around. David is out the back and I don't think he can hear me. (laughs) Could someone hop out? Ian, could you go and grab David for me? Thanks very much. Um, But in the meantime, John, do you want to tell us what's been happening this past week? Thanks, Sarah. Um, Good morning, everyone. If you're in the building, give me a cheer. Online, give me a cheer. Oh, that was sad. That was sad. Give me a whoop in the comment or something. Um, really nice to see you. Um, yes, Dave, you can use this one. So. Well, well, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this week we've been having Youth Welcome Week. I can see some some young people who've been to Welcome Week. Um, I won't embarrass you. I'll get you get you up. But we've had a really really wonderful time uh, this week. We've had um, over kind of 90 young people over over our events um, signing up and, and coming. Um, it's been really really wonderful to see young people in the building to feel life and noise and mess and chaos happen, (laughs) let chaos reign in the church again. So um, if you've come, I just want to say thank you. We've had a wonderful time. Um, We'd love to do another Welcome Week just to celebrate this maybe in September if you've you've enjoyed it. But um, but yeah, we've we've run loads of different events. Um, We've run a girls' night in, which was on Thursday night, which was fantastic. I went... I don't, we I don't let think, John in, even I don't though think he's I should have gone, girl. but I did. <laughs> um, and we had a movie night. Uh, we watched Cool Runnings, and some some young people had never seen it, so I was very shocked. If you haven't seen Cool Runnings, watch it. And and Dave, do you want to tell us about um, Tuesday and Wednesday? Yep. Uh, Tuesday we had hangout. We had a full full capacity, and we we had an aeroplane competition. A uh, paper aeroplane competition, which was <laughs> a paper aeroplane, paper aeroplane. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then on Wednesday we had the football. We had the younger lot at 5:45, and then we had the older lot at 6:45. We had a great turnout. Uh, and this week it's uh, we've got an adult session from 7:45. So any adults here that want to get fit, uh, work on your cardio. It's not competitive. There'll be hopefully no injuries, so we can all go back to work the next day. Uh, Yeah, so come along. We had a great week. The football and that still carries on every Wednesday. So hope to see Sean. Hope to see you there again, yeah? There you go. (laughs) Amazing. Thanks, guys. It's, yeah, it's just so great to be, yeah, opening up the church to our young people um, again. And, um, yeah, just seeing some people come back who've not been for such a long time and even some new people as well. So it really has been wonderful. So, again, if you've got a teenager in your household, uh, someone in secondary school, do let them know uh, that everything's back on again. Um, They do need to sign up, so um, head on over to the website for more information. We are going to move on. Um, We're going to have our Bible readings from Nathan and Anne-Marie, and then Graham's going to come and speak to us. Luke 24, 36 to 48. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what it is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed 
with power from on high. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. A reading from Acts 3, 12 to 19. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him as you all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, uh... Good morning, everybody. This is always a challenge. This is the the first challenge I face, taking a face covering off with a headset microphone on. Um, It's great to be with you. Uh, It's really lovely to be back in the building again. I was away last week, um, but it was wonderful to be back together for Easter Sunday, and it's great to be with you here today, those of you in the building, and also those of you on the stream uh, at home or wherever you are as well. Um, It's funny, I I was laughing. I was like, actually... Maybe church has just gone back to normal immediately because at 10.30, um, the building was half empty and there was no one watching online. So we know that things have gone back to normal when everyone's wandering in three minutes late to the service. Uh, But well done, you're here, you made it. And if you're watching online and you want to come and join us, uh, then there are a few empty seats. So do remember to book up, to sign up online. Um, It's good to be together. It's safe to be together. Uh, Something happens when we worship God together. It's not that nothing happens when we worship together online. That's good too, but the scriptures tell us that the Lord commands a blessing when brothers and sisters dwell together in unity. And uh, today, those of us who are in the building are going to share Holy Communion, and there is no greater blessing uh, than the celebration of Holy Communion when God pledges to come and fill us with himself, to nourish us with himself. And today, I want to talk to you about um, the blessing of God's presence and what happens when God heals us. And uh, as I was praying through the week and preparing to preach today, I had the sense that uh, God wanted to work among some of us today, those of us here in the building and also those of you watching online, that for some of us today might be a day of healing and transformation. And so I want to focus on um, the second passage that Anne-Marie read for us today, the passage in Acts, and uh, I'm going to go and grab the Bible in a moment and read a few more verses. So if, you, if you're somebody who has a Bible app on your phone, you might want to get that out and keep Acts 3 open in front of you. We, we love watching TV shows uh, together as a family, a series or box sets. The only trouble I have is sometimes we're watching TV shows that don't really grab my attention. I don't really follow exactly what's going on. We're watching um, a show called Falcon and the Winter Soldier at the moment and it hasn't hasn't really gotten under my skin yet and grabbed me. And sometimes I doze off a little bit and then I wake up and I think to myself, I'm not sure I really understood what was going on before I dozed off. And now that I've come to, I know that I don't know what's going on. I really don't understand. Um, and sometimes, I don't know if you've ever done this, you, you sort of join in with a film or a, or a TV show or a box set or a Netflix series or something that maybe you know, a friend or a spouse has been watching and you join in but you come in halfway through and you're not quite sure what's going on. It's as though you're picking up the plot but you've missed some vital part of the action. It can happen, of course, not with just TV shows and films, but also if you are in a conversation, you wander up to a group of friends and they're having a conversation and you sort of uh, slightly haven't quite caught the the drift of what's going on. Well, in these few weeks of the Easter season, I think it's a bit like that with our Bible readings and our sermons. 
Uh, everybody in those first weeks after Jesus' resurrection, everybody who encounters him, everyone who encounters the apostles, is trying to work out what was the vital bit of action that just happened that has led to this. This conversation, this, this you know, Peter's gotten up to give a little talk. Why has he gotten up to give it a talk? What's gone on? There's always been a vital bit of action that has happened just before that we have to try and figure out what it is. And, and then we have to try and make sense of how the world is now because of what happened just before. And that's why we're sort of calling this little season of sermons uh, last week, this week, over the next few weeks, Life in the Light of the Resurrection, because everything has changed because of the resurrection of Jesus. Everything has changed. That vital, decisive event and piece of action in the history of the world has changed everything. And our lives can never be the same. But sometimes we come at it a little bit late and we have to work out, well, what's gone on and what does this mean for me now? Now, our Bible reading in Acts today is a little bit like that. We picked up this extraordinary story uh, of the healing of a lame man at the gate that was called Beautiful. It's reported in Acts 3. And we pick up the story with Peter giving a sort of speech or sermon or explanation of what it was that happened and by whose power what happened happened. So something has happened and a crowd has gathered and they're a bit astonished and amazed and Peter gets up to explain. Now we know from what we heard in the Bible reading and what Peter is saying that it has something to do with a man walking and being made strong. And we also know that whatever happened, happened because of the power of the name of a man called Jesus. And if we didn't know Jesus before this moment, well now we're interested Because lame men don't just walk, and they certainly don't leap around and jump. I mean, my goodness, we're going to discover this in a moment, but actually, the the guy only wanted money, and what he got was strong ankles, the recovery of his mobility. He was healed. That which had ailed him was transformed. So let's wind back a few verses and see what happened. Let me just... um, Uh, read the beginning of Acts chapter 3 for us. So this is what was happening. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth, this is a man who had never walked, had no experience of walking. You know how long it takes a baby infant to become a toddler and to toddle and to learn to walk. Any of you who are parents and have watched it, you know it has faltering starts. They trip over, they fall, they stumble. They need to learn how to walk. This man had never experienced it. He was being carried to the, called the temple gate called Beautiful. The, um, Jerusalem had walls with gates uh, and you remember there was this uh, there was a story where Jesus talked about bringing a camel uh, through the eye of a needle, and that suggested that that was a particular gate on the Jerusalem uh, walls. Um, and here, the temple courts had their own gates as well, and one of the gates was called Beautiful. And we know this from this verse and later on in the passage and from archaeology. And he was put there every day, uh, presumably by some friends, um, to beg from those going into the temple courts. Verse 3 says, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. I want to come back to this, but just pause and think for a moment. This man who was uh, born lame from birth, his friends have put him by the temple gate, and he's sat there. And, And it says he saw Peter and John, but he wasn't looking at them. They didn't have his full attention. He was just seeing a stream of people going past, begging for money. But Peter and John wanted his attention. Peter and John knew that they had something to offer, but they needed this man to give him their attention. And that's why Peter said, look at us. The man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And he did get something from them, but it wasn't what he was expecting or what he was asking for. There's an old joke that says the man born lame begging at the beautiful gate was asking for arms, but Peter and John gave him legs. 
You get an arms ALMS, you know, silver and gold. It's a bit of a bad joke, but I quite like it. It appeals to my sense of humor. Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. This was a man who had been born lame and had never walked. He wasn't recovering the ability to walk. He wasn't remembering what it was like to walk. He was just being made to walk. He went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. Now, that's what happened immediately before the reading that we heard read today, which is Peter's, as it were, sermon or speech. This is actually the first miracle that is recorded in the Bible as being performed by the apostles in the name of Jesus. Jesus did many miraculous healings, as you know, uh, and those are recorded in the Gospels. But this is the first time after Jesus' death and resurrection and after the Spirit is given at Pentecost that the apostles uh, now begin to do these greater things than I do that Jesus had promised. You remember Jesus promised, you will do even greater things than I. It doesn't necessarily mean greater in scale or quality, but quantity. Over the history of the church, many more people have been healed by the power and in the name of Jesus through Christian disciples obediently praying for healing than Jesus ever healed in his own lifetime. So this is, this is an important text for us because it is an account of the first miracle performed by the apostles. And this sets for us something of a pattern of what do miraculous healings look like in the kingdom of God. We can learn something about what miracles do, what miracles are, what healing is by reading this passage. I should say that this is the first miracle recorded in the Bible as performed by the apostles, unless you count sharing all their possessions in Acts chapter 2 as being a miracle, which I'm tempted in our day and age to think of it as a little bit miraculous, uh, sharing all that they had in common. But what this account does is it, it shows us, I think, two things in particular that I want to focus on. That um, the miracle shows us something uh, upwards shows us about um, the power of the name of Jesus, and it also shows us something forwards. It points us forwards to what God is doing and what God's kingdom is like. So first of all, um, let's think about how this story, this account, this miracle, this healing points us upwards. The man wanted money to survive. He wanted silver and gold. He wanted arms. He wanted uh, something to live on. But that's not what he really needed. That's what he wanted. But Peter and John, that he needed something else. He needed health and wholeness. He needed to be reconciled to God for his sins to be forgiven. He needed to know Jesus. And that's what Peter offers him. Peter offers him healing in the name of Jesus. How does this happen? Well, Going back to verse 4, Peter said, look at us. Peter and John stand there and they look at this man who has called out to them. The man saw them, but he wasn't looking at them. And Peter and John say, look at us. Peter and John say to the man, look at us so that you can see Jesus. St. Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. The scriptures teach us that we are the body of Christ, that we are being transformed into the likeness of Christ, conformed to his image. That doesn't mean that we are all sort of transmutating to become first century Palestinian men, no. It means that in our character, in our disposition, in our behavior, uh, in the way we act and live and love one another, we bear the image of Christ. So when people look at us, they see Jesus. When 
Jesus performs miraculous healings through us. It's not that people look at us as powerful. It's that they see him as powerful. Peter goes on. He takes the man by the hand. says there, verse 7, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. Taking him by the right hand. Now, it's helpful to bear in mind that in first century Jewish culture, to be uh, ill, to have a problem with your health, uh, was a sign of being ritually unclean and separated from God's presence. And to touch somebody who was unclean was to run the risk of making yourself ceremonially unclean as well. Now, this was particularly the case with some of the skin diseases, such as leprosy, uh, or other kinds of conditions, even things like eczema probably would have been counted. It was a sense that you cannot touch somebody who has a skin disease because you might become, you might become ill yourself, you might become ceremonially unclean. And the deeper underlying philosophy was this, that people's ailments, their illnesses, their disabilities are probably a sign of their sin, probably a sign of something they've done wrong something they've said wrong, behaved wrong, that has cut them off from God and they're being punished for it. And that's why I remember in John chapter nine, when Jesus encounters a man born blind, the Pharisees ask him and they say to him, who sinned, this man or his parents? And Jesus says, neither. It's not his sin, it's not his parents' sin. This is done that God's glory might be revealed. And so he's saying that actually in the healing, it's going to reveal God's glory, but don't get hung up on why somebody is unwell, why somebody is sick, why somebody has a disability. But you need to understand that when Peter is reaching out and taking this man by the right hand, he's doing something extraordinary in his time. Because rather than standing back and thinking, I don't want to have anything to do with you lest I become ritually impure, ceremonially unclean, he's demonstrating compassionate mercy. It's what Jesus did when Jesus reached out and touched the man with a withered hand. And you see, what we see in the New Testament is that instead of illness, uh, sickness, disease, disability, instead of that being somehow something that is kind of transmittable and making other people ritually unclean, when we act with compassionate mercy and grace, God's holiness, God's wholeness flows from us into others. When Jesus reaches out and touches the withered hand, the man with the withered hand, when Peter takes this man by the right hand, they're saying, we don't believe that there is any power that is greater than the compassionate, gracious, merciful power of Jesus Christ. And instead of being made unclean, healing flows. He takes the man by the hand, compassionate mercy. And then I think this is really interesting. Look what happens next in the passage. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. So the man stood up. He was helped up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. It wasn't that the man's feet and ankles became strong and then he stood up. It's that he stood up in obedience, in response. And his feet and ankles became strong. You see the difference? He didn't wait until he had verified that his feet and ankles were strong and then try to do it, as it were, in his own strength. He responded to the invitation. He responded to the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He responded to the action of being taken by the hand and lifted to his feet. And that's when the healing happened. I think this is important for us to remember in our own lives that we respond to the promise, the gift, the grace of God in Christ. And when we step out in confidence, in faith, in trust, that's when our healing and our wholeness occurs. It's an invitation to step out in faith even when we're not sure that the healing has yet happened. Now, hear me right, I'm saying this not just about our physical healing, but also our, our emotional, our mental, our spiritual healing. There's something about having the trust and the faith and the belief in the power of God that says, 
I believe that God heals me. And so I will step out, step up and live as though I'm healed. And then we discover his healing power among us. So this miracle points us upwards. This account of a healing points us upwards and it gives glory to God. And what's the response? People were filled with wonder at what happened. Verse 10, filled with wonder and amazement. And verse 11, a crowd gathers and they come rushing. And what does Peter do? Peter explains who Jesus is. Peter explains not the healing. Peter doesn't say, this is what we were doing. We were walking by and then we saw this man and he asked for arms but we gave him legs. He doesn't say any of that. He talks about Jesus. He talks about the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to situate this story within a particular story of the God of Israel. The miracle and the healing are are wonderful but more wonderful is the one who did it the one by whose power and in whose name that healing and miracle were performed. You see, healing gives birth to testimony. When we are healed and transformed, we have a story to tell, a story about the one who healed us. That's actually how the church has grown through the history of the world. People have encountered the risen Christ experienced his healing and his transforming love, his grace and power in their lives, and they've told their friends and their neighbors, their family members, God has done it. God has done this in me. And people see it. We see the evidence of our own eyes, don't we? we some of you have seen friends or family members, and you've seen them change because they came to know Jesus. And you thought, I want me a piece of that. I want some of that. Peter tells the story of who performed the healing, how it was done. Verse 13, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus. He tells the name of the one by whose power the the healing was performed. He tells the story of what happened. Verse 15, you killed the author of life. Remember, he's gathered uh, by Solomon's colonnade in the temple. Those people who are there at the temple to pray are Jews. They are Israelites. They are the faithful Israelites. Um, This is not in a way that this is not the Gentile population at the moment. This is the people of Israel, the Jews in that place gathered to pray. And he's saying the Messiah came and you rejected him, but... The one foretold by the scriptures came and was seen among us and you didn't believe him and you put him to death. You saw him as a threat. He didn't meet your expectations and so you had him put to death. But you killed the author of life but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. And then what does he say? Verse 16, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. In other words, Peter is not saying he has anything to do with himself. He's saying it's not because I'm a really holy leader or like I'm a really, really good leader or I learned this new trick, or, you know, he doesn't do any of that. He says it's faith in the name of Jesus that has brought about this healing. So the miracle points us upwards. It says time and time and again that it is, it, is, it is seeing Jesus, looking at Peter and John and seeing Jesus, responding to the invitation uh, of Jesus through Peter and John, taking him by the right hand, responding to that compassionate mercy of Jesus that reaches out and takes him by the right hand. Finding his feet and ankles being made strong uh, and then Peter telling the story of what has happened and explaining this is all in the name of Jesus. The miracle, the healing points us upwards and gives glory to God. But the miracle uh, and the healing also point us forwards to what God is doing in history and what he will one day bring to completion in history. You see, the miracles of Jesus and the apostles in the New Testament are not magic tricks. They're not impressive uh, feats of power or prowess. They're they're not something that makes the apostles look impressive, or Jesus for that matter. You know, when when Jesus uh, performed healings and performed miracles, um, 
with people around him, they were all about the alleviation of suffering. They were never about his own power. He didn't, he didn't levitate and sort of float around and say, hey guys, watch me fly, this is impressive. Believe in me, because look what I can do. He didn't kind of, he wasn't doing kind of uh, miracles that were about seeing through walls and saying, there are five chairs beyond that wall. It's, it's not that kind of miracle. It's about healings which alleviate suffering. It's about miracles that restore how things should be. And this is something that actually those who were reading scriptures would recognize as being a, a foretelling of God's coming Messiah and God's coming kingdom. Isaiah 35 says, Then shall the lame leap like a heart. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped. The prophetic vision of God's coming kingdom and his Messiah is of a time when ailments are overcome, when disabilities, diseases, disorders are set right. when things are put back the way they should be, the way they were intended to be, when, as uh, Julian Norwich says, all will be well and all manner of things will be well. So those who were uh, witnessing this extraordinary healing in the man born lame from birth, uh, leaping around, leaping and jumping and praising God, they may have, they, they, their ears may have pricked up, their eyes may have opened, they may have said, this looks a lot like what was foretold in Isaiah 35. Then shall the lame leap like a heart. He didn't just kind of gently, tentatively climb to his feet. He leapt for joy. The miraculous healings of Jesus and the apostles point us forwards to how one day the world will be. Now, the miraculous healings are not against the laws of nature. And it's worth saying that, you know, in, in, our, in Western modern society for a long time, and people have read the Bible and they said, well, I just can't quite believe in this Jesus or this story of Christian faith because these stories of miracles, well, they're against the laws of nature. And it becomes a stumbling block for people. I think particularly in Western modern society, we've had you know, 200, 300 years of a particular scientific worldview that has said these are the laws of nature, it's stable, it's fixed, it's reliable, and these things don't happen. It's a worldview and a mindset that says these things don't happen. Now, if, and you, some of you may be of the age where that's the way you were kind of brought up and schooled, and that's the way your parents were brought up and schooled, and yeah, it's like, oh, you always have to sort of overcome this barrier of these miraculous healings. Actually, I think less and less people in the world nowadays have a problem with miraculous healings or miracles as somehow going against the laws of nature, partly because now for 20 or 30 years, um, the scientific community around the world more and more says, well, actually, kind of quantum theory and chaos theory and string theory suggests that we really don't know. The laws of, the laws of nature, as it were, are not nearly as fixed as people once supposed they were. There's a lot more that doesn't conform and that we can't really explain. And so... You know, if, if, if for you, and, and if you're watching online, if you're here in the building, if, if, if the barrier for Christian faith for you is, I read the Bible and I just can't get beyond these miraculous healings, they, they can't possibly have happened. I'm going to say, don't get hung up on that. Because actually, um, that worldview, that kind of particular rationalist scientific worldview is a feature of a particular time and a particular culture and a particular set of learnings. It's not actually all that prevalent around the world uh, anymore. If, if, if you read the Bible, if you're thinking about Christianity and you're not quite sure whether you can put your faith and your trust and your hope in Jesus, don't get hung up by the miraculous healings. Um, look at Jesus. Look at the, the life, the character, the teachings, the death and the resurrection of Jesus and make your decision based on that. What I would say about um, you know, the miraculous healings in the Bible is that the Bible also says God sustains everything by his powerful word. The message of the scriptures is that if God were to withdraw uh, his presence from the universe, everything would collapse into nothingness. Colossians 1 says, in him all things hold together. 
So what we sometimes describe as the laws of nature are, are really just God's characteristic and customary ways of sustaining the world. They're, they're how God usually sustains the world. But that doesn't mean that he can't speak in a different way or work in a different way. That's his prerogative. The healings in the New Testament, in, in the Bible, the healings that Jesus performs, the healings that the apostles perform, show the world as it should be and one day will be. They point forwards to a time when all things will be restored, when all will be healed. Are we all healed now? No. Because we still live, as it were, caught between um, you know, that kind of conclusive victory over the powers of sin and death through uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus on the cross 2,000 years ago, that first Easter. We, we live in, in the in-between times between that time and the time when all things will be made well, all things will be renewed. And our work is to bear witness to the power of Jesus, to have our hearts directed forwards to the world as it will be. Healing shows us what the world is becoming because of Jesus' death and resurrection. And miraculous healings are available to all of us, to all of our friends and neighbours. Not all will be healed now. We, we still live in between the times. But the other interesting thing about miraculous healings is that sometimes people find that even though may, they may not receive a physical healing, they, they do experience an emotional or a spiritual or a relational healing. Healing is multifaceted. It's holistic as more and more people are coming to know. So this miraculous healing of the man lame from birth, being healed, walking and dancing and praising God, points us upwards to the source of the power, the name of Jesus who heals, and it points us forwards to how God's world is going to be in the new heaven and the new earth, when, when all impediments, all uh, disabilities, all uh, the all the diseases and disorders which separate us from God and from one another will be overcome, will be put right, will be healed. How can we enjoy that now? Well, I think in this passage, one other thing really stood out to me this week as I was reading. The man was brought by his friends to beg at the beautiful gate. It says again, a few verses later, that he received his healing at the gate that was called beautiful. He'd come to the place where God's presence and power were known to dwell, the temple. And he sat at the gate, hoping, waiting, asking, seeking. What was special about that gate? It was beautiful, wonderful. Actually, the word... Uh, the Hebrew word translated beautiful or wonderful can also mean ripe or ready. A bit like you might look at a piece of fruit and say, that's, that's beautiful, that's wonderful, meaning it's ripe and ready for the eating. In other words, the beautiful gate was ready for God's healing. The time was ripe, the time was now. It was beautiful. Jesus says, I am the gate. In John chapter 10, Jesus says, I am the gate for the sheep. Jesus says, I am the gate. Jesus is the beautiful gate through which we may find our healing. And how does Peter conclude his sermon in verse 19 of Acts chapter 3? He says, come back to God. Repent. You know, I harp on about this, but we mustn't get down on the word repent. In our culture, we think, repent. We, we think of like street preachers Shouting, probably with a Northern Irish accent, sorry. <laughs> but we, we, we think of kind of repent ye. You know, we have this kind of uh, hellfire and brimstone image and it feels awful, doesn't it? Repent, we've got, to, we've, got to, we've got to redeem and recover this word. Repentance just means coming back to Jesus, coming to the gate. That's why we confess. That's why we repent and confess whenever we gather for worship. Because it's just coming to the gate, the beautiful gate. It's just saying, I want to be in the place where I might recover healing, where I might experience wholeness, fullness. 
Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Who doesn't need their sins wiping out? I want my sins wiped out. I want to be free from all that binds me and enslaves me. All the failings, uh, all the fallibilities, all the things which frustrate me. I want to be set free from those. That times of refreshing may come from the Lord. I want to invite you uh, here in the building to stand. And if you're at home, I want to invite you to stand as well. And um, I want to invite the power of Jesus through the Holy Spirit to come and be with us to heal us. And the way we're going to do this uh, is really simple. Um, I'm going to give a moment's silence and each of you in your hearts know the areas for which you need the healing power of Jesus. Um, for some of you, that's something physical. For others of you, that's something um, relational or emotional. And what I want to invite you to do now is uh, we, we can't do prayer ministry in the way we, we customarily would do prayer ministry here. You, you know, in, in other days, we'd invite you down to the front. We'd have a team of people and we'd lay hands on you and anoint you with oil. And for COVID reasons, we can't do that. But that doesn't get in the way of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is greater than our prayer ministry teams. And so I want to invite you just to place your hand on your heart did this a couple of weeks ago, it's really simple. If, you, if there's a particular physical ailment, uh, and you know if it's like your, your, your elbow or your shoulder or your ears or your hearing or something, place your hand where you want to receive healing. Um, you know, and if you don't want to place your hand where you want to receive healing, uh, for whatever reason, you know, just place your hand on your heart. But you can place your, you know, if you've got gut problems, place your hand on your stomach, whatever it is. And we're going to spend some time praying and we're going to come to the gate that is beautiful, Jesus of Nazareth. Many things we think we want, silver, gold, all manner of things, but one thing we need, which is the power of Jesus in our lives, the power of the Holy Spirit to make us whole. So come, Holy Spirit, humbly, we call upon you We ask in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit might be poured out in this place now, in this building and upon those who are watching online. And Father, as your people, we call upon the name of Jesus to heal us and make us whole. Would you fill us with your Holy Spirit? Take away all sickness, all infirmity. Vanquish every disease. Break every chain. And Lord Jesus, for those seeking physical healing today, I pray that you would make all things new. To point our eyes upward to you. To point us forward to the coming of your kingdom. Kids are rejoining us, but don't worry about that. Just let them come back in and rejoin us. Let's continue to just seek God's power and his grace. Come, Lord Jesus.
Father, heal us and make us whole. Conform us to the image of your son, Jesus. Help us to bear witness to his power, his name. And may our lives be a testimony to your grace. As we are healed, help us to speak of our healing and to give glory to you, the source of all healing. To direct people to find healing and wholeness in your coming kingdom. We ask this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We're going to continue uh, in prayer. You're really welcome to sit uh, as we pray. And that, but I'm also going to just ask um, that uh, we, we're going to share communion in a little while and then there'll be a chance at the end of the service to go outside. And if, you, if you've prayed for physical healing and you can feel that something has changed, we'd love to know because testimony, as you know, is part of what this is all about. So if you're watching online and you prayed for Jesus to heal you physically, uh, test it out. You know, get up, walk, use whatever was hurting, whatever was causing you problems. See whether it feels any better and let us know. Uh, post a message in the comment thread. Um, if you're here in the building, um, test out that stiff shoulder or whatever it was. See how it feels and, and tell us uh, at the end of the service so that we can give glory to God. But let's continue uh, in prayer and Nick's going to lead our intercessions. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for fulfilling your promises to us. Thank you for your resurrecting light in our lives, wiping our sins and making us clean again. We are thankful that you have reconciled us to you. Help us to encourage your Holy Spirit in our hearts, transforming us, giving us new life and new hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world, especially we pray for those who were shot and killed in Indianapolis yesterday. Console their families, fellow workers, and the local community in this senseless incident. Through the power of your love, Lord, comfort them as they grieve. We pray for the UK, and especially the royal family, as they grieve the loss of Prince Philip. Father, guide our leaders in government and those in authority as they continue to make decisions rolling out the vaccine to those most vulnerable in our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for our community in Hoxton. Thank you that we're able to come together again to worship you. Thank you for all the staff team that has worked tirelessly to keep our services going. And that includes our kids groups and our youth groups. Thank you that we've been able to bring our church family together. For all of those that have contributed to and worked with the food bank to support our community too. We're grateful that we've been able to keep going and keep connected through this time. Help us to encourage each other and pray for one another. Help us to continue to spread your light through our actions with the asylum seekers living on Pitfield Street, that we may show them love, kindness and compassion just as you have done to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, thank you for renewing our hearts, hands and minds through your resurrection. We praise you for your power, presence and purpose in our lives. Lord, pour your spirit afresh on us and may your resurrecting power shine bright in our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks so much, Nick, and thanks to Graham <coughs> for the sermon. Um, great to have you with us again, uh, especially those of you who are watching online. If you've joined since the beginning of the service, welcome. And if you are um, thinking you might want to make St. John's your regular church, then head on over to our website, sgh.org.uk forward slash welcome, and you can fill out a connect card and that way we can keep in touch with you um, and let you know how you can get more involved. 
And for the, everyone else, do stay connected. Use, um, be part of our WhatsApp and our Facebook groups to find out everything that's going on in the life of the church during the week. And um, we also have a link tree, which has got all the different sign-ups that you need on how, how to sign up for the different events that are going on. <clears throat> and, um, and for those online, I'm sure that will get posted uh, in, the, in the feed. Um, and again, social media, we've got all, all Facebook, Instagram, Twitter uh, to find out what's happening. And now that um, schools are going back and the Easter holidays are over, most of our in-person in um, and online midweek events will be back up and running. So connect groups, um, including a kids connect group, um, will be starting up this week. Um, our youth um, hangout, football uh, and um, Sunday Youth will all be back on. Psalms and Stretches will be back on um, as well. So again, check out the calendar on the website um, to find out um, all the different options of ways that you can have fellowship with one another throughout the week. Um, and we now have a few video notices, um, and here is the first one, Invest. <laughs> What has God given to you? All that we have comes from God. And what money we have is given us to use and invest in God's kingdom. Whether we have five pounds, 50 pounds or 500 pounds to invest, we're invited to put our money to work for God's kingdom. And this month, we're inviting every one of you to prayerfully decide how you will invest what God has entrusted to you. This is for everyone, whether you're 15 or 50. Giving generously is in the very nature of God. And when we give cheerfully, generously and sacrificially, we become more like Jesus and we grow closer to God. So pray, think and decide how you will respond. Maybe you already give financially, but it's time to revise the amount. Maybe you've never given money regularly, but you want to start. Maybe you give from time to time, but it's time to give regularly. Whatever it is for you, I urge you to act. The money you give will make you more like Jesus. It will set you free and it will help transform lives and build God's kingdom. So visit www.sjh.org.uk forward slash giving and click invest. As Graham said, you can head on over to the website, um, or for those of you in the building, you'll find on your seat one of these cards. So if you want to grab it, you might be able to grab a pen, and why not do it now? You could fill it out. Again, there's just tick boxes um, so that you can decide. Maybe you're someone who gives already, but you want to think about um, changing what you give. Maybe you don't give and you want to start, or maybe you give occasionally, but you want to give more regularly. So. Um, Grab a postcard and you can hand it into the welcome team at the back on your way out. And we are now going to hear about Alpha. Alpha Online is a free course designed to give you the space and time to ask the big and often challenging questions about life, faith and meaning. No filters, just honest discussion. To attend an Alpha Online, all you have to do is sign up and then join a weekly online call, all from the comfort of your home. Everything else is taken care of by your hosts. So feel free to pour yourself a drink, get comfy, get your laptop ready, and you are good to go. What have you got to lose? Try Alpha Online. Try Alpha Online. I can't recommend it highly enough. Such a great way to really um, grapple with those big questions that you might be wondering about, whether you're a Christian or whether um, or you're not. Um, it's just such a, a wonderful space. Um, so if you are interested, again, you can head over to the website and sign up at sjh.org.uk forward slash alpha. And I think the Alpha course is going to be on a Sunday at five um, online. So you can join in from wherever you are. And finally, uh, we're going to hear about the London Citizens Mayoral Assembly. I'm going to lift my sister up. She is our The London Citizens Mayoral Assembly will be on Wednesday, the 28th of April at 6 p.m. We will be presenting our London Citizens Manifesto for Change to the two frontrunners, Sadiq Khan and Sean Bailey, and asking them to respond to our asks. 
This manifesto has not been created by experts and think tanks or political masterminds, but by hundreds of Londoners just like you and me from vastly different backgrounds working together in relationship. It's a people-powered manifesto because together we can transform our city. The issues in our manifesto are housing and homelessness. We want the next Mayor of London to make housing genuinely affordable, to increase the supply of supported accommodation and improve the quality of temporary accommodation and ensure that it stays temporary. Youth safety. We want the next Mayor of London to commit funding and powers to police scrutiny, establish a parent commissioner at the GLA to advocate and amplify parents' voices, and to commit funding and resources to tackling school exclusions. Living wage. We want the next Mayor of London to make London a living wage city with one million Londoners employed by a living wage employer by 2024, and to make the Greater London Authority a living hours employer. Welcome and Sanctuary. We want the next Mayor of London to give long-term commitment and support to Londoners to settle their immigration status, to fund and keep updated an ESOL website to make accessing English classes easier, and to work with us to make hate crime reporting easier and more effective. Just Transition. We want the next Mayor of London to create 60,000 good green jobs and apprenticeships and to upgrade 100,000 homes to end fuel poverty by 2030. There's still time to sign up to attend and be a part of this amazing assembly. I'll be there. Will you? We are the I'll be there too. Um, and there is, um, as Jessica said, there's still time to sign up and I'll be around um, out, out the front, the back, I don't know, outside um, with my iPad. If you want to sign up right now, for those of you who are in the building, I'm happy to sit and do that with you. And I'm sure Jessica would be as well. Um, or if you're online, I'm sure the link to sign up will appear um, in the feed. And and it's an online assembly. So again, you can join in and be part of it from the comfort of your own home. And I'm sure that one of those issues that you heard mentioned in that video will affect you somehow or other. Maybe it's something that you feel passionate about that you want to change. And it's only by being part of this kind of event that we can really make a difference and show God's love to the people of London. So I really highly encourage you to sign up to be there. We are going to share the peace together. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. And then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please do share the peace with one another. We are going to use British Sign Language or one of those, I guess, with those of you who are in the building. We're still not allowed to shake hands or hug. So um, do stand and wave and share the piece that way and for those of you um, online you can uh, pop a comment in the thread peace of the lord be with you peace be with you Peace be with you. 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 Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace 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 of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you all. We're going to celebrate Holy Communion together. Can I invite you to stand? And uh, those of us who are together in the building will be able to share Holy Communion. Those of you watching online, uh, we pray with you and for you that you will experience uh, the presence of God and that you can join us in spiritual communion uh, today. Let's just take a moment to focus our hearts and our minds 
upon the living God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of John the Baptist and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And so we pray together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. We're going to distribute uh, the bread and wine of Holy Communion to those who are here in the building with us and everybody is very warmly welcomed. All baptized Christians are warmly welcomed to come and receive the bread and wine. And that includes uh, children, if you've discussed and agreed that with your parents. We are receiving at the moment by intinction. That means you have the bread dipped in uh, the wine and then just dropped into your hand. I won't use any words at the distribution. I'll have my face covering uh, back on as per all of our sort of guidance. Um, but, and the welcome team will invite you to come up one row at a time um, to receive communion. I feel like there was something else. Oh, and I wanted to remind you as well that our communion wine is non-alcoholic, so if that's relevant to you, then um, do please keep that under consideration as well. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
痴呀。alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. My bad, I forgot to unmute myself. Um, uh, let's pray together our prayer after communion, saying, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Sorry, back over to you, but just before we do, just uh, two quick things. Um, Florence, I can wind you here. Florence, give us a little wave. Florence's daughter, Rachel, got married here at the church yesterday. Let's give her a big round of applause. They did so well. Florence and Ade were married here, and of course they could only have 15 guests, but we had a wonderful service, didn't we? And they had their reception outside in the marquee, and it was live-streamed, and they did really well. So it was delightful to see Rachel, who grew up here in the church, able to marry here. So do pass on our congratulations from everyone here at the church, Florence. Um, and also, can we just acknowledge what an amazing recording of Faithful One that is, with Besede and John and Jeremy singing. Let's give them a round of applause and thank them for it. <laughs> 
it has, it has incidentally been sent across the Atlantic to the song's writer, Brian Dirksen, who is said to really like it as well. So there we are. <laughs> anyway, Sarah, back to you. Right. Uh, so, um, if you're a regular, you'll know that we uh, each Sunday we hear from one of um, our own about what they will be doing this time tomorrow. And uh, this week we're going to hear from Anne Marie. Hello, my name is Anne Marie Nye. I've been coming to St John's since the winter or autumn of. 2017 I started um I only um went to St John's Hoxton to do the alpha course with my then boyfriend um because one of the requirements was that he was a believer in Jesus and um he wasn't quite so we started doing the alpha course and yeah here we are nearly four years later this time tomorrow I will be at work that's what I'll be doing. I've been working from home since March last year, since the start of the pandemic. So I'm, I'll be trying to keep my cabin fever abated as well. I am uh, the communications officer for a church for the, for the central office of the United Reformed Church, which is the denomination that I work for. It has about 1,300 churches in England, Scotland and Wales. So I'll be starting to do the national newsletter for the denomination. It's a monthly kind of publication that I pull together and I send out to quite a few people. What are the challenges and the joys? It's really busy. It's non-stop. Um, that's a challenge. It's a lot. We've had somebody who has recently left our office so i've taken on another newsletter that went in the magazine that the denomination publishes um so yeah it's a busy it's actually going to be a busy week so i'll be busy putting that together it's a big challenge because at the same time you've got to juggle lots of other things media calls um queries getting news up on the website, posting news on social media, finding content, sourcing content, um, attending meetings. Church is like lots of meetings I, I've figured out since I've started working for a church and they always last hours. So I always feel like I have to make up the time like after work, even though I'm working. Um, the joy of working for a church is that I feel like I'm playing my part in spreading the good news about Jesus um, around the denomination. So I like that part of it. And also um, it really suits my skill set. Um, like I've had different jobs throughout my career and it kind of feels like it combines it all. Um, so that's a joy. And I work for a really nice uh, manager. It's quite supportive. And yeah, all in all, it's a good team. That's a good question. Well, I used to work in the secular industry. I used to work for a local newspaper. I've worked in social services. I've worked in the insurance industry. I've worked in administration. I've had, you know, different jobs. And I really wanted to work with people, uh, with like-minded people that had similar um, values and beliefs that I do as a Christian. Um, so I kind of feel that that, I don't, it, it's like I don't have to be ashamed of my faith. I can share my faith. I work with other people that have faith. It's really nice um, um, at times like Easter and Christmas because, you know, I actually get to go to church with my job. Well, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And like I said earlier, I work a lot in the evenings. I work past my hours so I work a night my technically my hours are nine to five and I always work over that sometimes it'll be I'm really bad at shutting off so sometimes it'll be 10 11 at night and I'll still be working away and then getting up and doing it all again the next day so I'd like prayers to put my perfectionism aside um and just remember that who I'm really doing the job for and that's for God because 
he's really the manager of everything. So just to kind of get a, a work-life balance as well, um, those prayers would be much appreciated. Thank you. Thanks so much, Amory. Let's pray for Amory now. Father God, we thank you so much for Anne-Marie and for this work and this um, calling that you have on her life. Uh, we thank you that she's found this job that um, suits um, the gifts and skills that you've given her. But Lord, we do pray that you would help her um, find that right work-life balance so that she doesn't spend too much time working but is still able to do the best job that she can. Lord, just bless her um, as she goes about her work this week and the busyness would you give her peace in Jesus' name? Amen. We're coming into land. After, um, <clears throat> I'm going to finish with a prayer of blessing and then there'll be a final worship song. Um, and that would be a great time to give uh, tithes and offerings um, by either visiting the website or in person. No, don't know. There's a card machine on your way out. Um, we still, unfortunately, are not allowed to share tea and coffee uh, after the service yet, but please, if I can urge everyone to head straight outside, uh, the welcome team will help you along. Enjoy the sunshine and catch up with one another outside the building in a COVID-friendly manner. <laughs> so, a blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Every morning, rising like the dawn, God of all creation, the wonder of it all. You're the song of freedom, you're the only way. Every new beginning is by grace. Up and alive in Jesus, into the life of freedom. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Ever name. Through the cross forgive, everything has changed. Every new beginning is by grace. Up and alive in Jesus, it's a life of freedom. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Jesus.